hello guys how are you all welcome to another video by me beyond astro k so guys i'm bringing you a lunar eclipse in taurus which is happening on the 28th of october 2023 this is the final eclipse story that happened in november 2021 and this is at five degrees so all the fixed signs that are zero to ten degrees is going to be affecting you it will sextile the water signs pisces and cancer uh it will also trine the earth signs virgo and capricorn but obviously it will affect scorpio because of opposition but you know you leos aquarius taurus and scorpio you're gonna feel this big time okay we are coming to an end of a journey that started two years ago you know, even if we all look back what happened to you, a lot has happened. You know, two years ago, we were still in that whole COVID thing where people were still wearing masks. And, you know, I don't know how you guys felt about the energies of the lunar eclipse in Taurus, but it was quite chaotic, to say the least. If you've got like planets in Taurus, you'll know exactly, or even a fixed sign, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And, but one thing about Taurus, and I'm going to say that, I'm going to speak about this more when I do like Taurus signs, that it is a very consistent sign. Good or bad, it's very consistent. It can be greedy. It can be stuck. It can be, you know, rigid. Not seeing the outer picture, just seeing what it wants to see um i'm willing to change remember it's it's, it's it's um it's it's a fixed sign but it's very consistent okay and i felt that if any of you did feel like especially like two years ago that you know you wanted to start in something and it didn't really pan out the way you did you still stuck with it and whether was, you may see a, remember this lasts from like what three to six months and you'll start seeing how far you've come. Okay? And I feel that a lot of us are going to learn a lot from this too. We've come to an end of like the North Node was in Taurus last year, February. And it's now finished. But this is like the last eclipse. The last time we had these eclipses in Taurus and Scorpio was, what, in 2014? 13, 14? Before that, it was... Uh, 1994 95 okay and saturn was in pisces then saturn was in pisces okay so the fact that what nearly 30 years later we have the eclipses the north node this time round, when we had saturn in pisces the north node was still in taurus so we're still going to see, especially with Saturn being in Pisces, we're still going to see similar themes happening. I feel that some of you may still see the people from the past from 30 years ago, things that weren't ended now can end. And also if we're wrapping up this eclipse as well, um, the same could happen too. Like people that we didn't, it could be apologising to, it could be many things guys. But I feel that we're going to see like this sort of like energy of release and come down. When I looked at the chart of this, a lot of the energy is in the 5th and also 11th house. A lot of energy is there, guys. So it does feel, and also I think the rising sign to this is, um, is actually really harmonious as well. You know, you see the 10th the, the, the house is in Cancer, the rising sign is in Pisces. So it also does feel like it's going to be very emotional, this this lunar eclipse. Very emotional. Obviously, we have like Venus in Virgo, which actually does help this. But also the big one is like you've got Jupiter, which is in Taurus, retrograde. So it's like we're coming to like a, we're like looking back, we're coming to an end. We are being quite cautious. Remember, retrogrades are about, you know, not moving forward too much is like sort of like being restraint because Jupiter's a little bit uncomfortable in Taurus. So you might see a little bit restraint. 
but also I feel that some of us may come to this conclusion of okay I need, just need to go for it I need to say sorry I need to spend less I need to you know not be as greedy I need to just be a bit more cautious I need to you know because money of course money is <laughs> you know we're, we're, we're dealing with Scorpio here and Taurus you know the sun is the sun Mars and Mercury are all in Scorpio so this does oppose it so it's not going to be about its niggles guys not gonna be about its niggles it's not gonna be about drama remember taurus is about you know the bank of the zodiac and scorpio is the you know what you owe me what you're giving back to me i'll give you this but you need to give this back you know it's a tax man the investigator and the tax man so yes yeah, so we're not gonna we're still gonna it's still gonna be on the money still gonna be on this money train guys but yeah, when I again when I look at the chart, a lot of energies does feel quite good, especially like you know we've got the eleventh house action that's going on. We've got the moon. We have Uranus. We also have the Jupiter on the eleventh house of this, and in the eleventh house we've got Aries, and we've got like the Sun, Mercury, and Mars all in Scorpio in the fifth. So of course. We can we can definitely probably see humanitarianism work, protests and global, lots of global things happening. But people helping each other, people opening their eyes. And also, of course, because of the fifth house as well, we can also see a lot of things to do with like creativity, children, and um what's the other thing I was thinking? You know when you're working for yourself as well. A lot of that happening too, amongst other things. Obviously, I'm talking about things that are just general, but you know, more can actually come. So yeah, this is a, this is a, this is a, this is a huge ending, guys, and it's not going to be about its tears. Not going to be about it. <laughs> you know, this of course there can be some tears. Of course there can be some shocks along the way, especially Uranus being there. But yeah, it's really good to look back on how far we've all come. Because this is going to affect all of us in a way. All of us in a way. But yeah, but I'm going to put, I pulled out three cards. Three oracle cards. Because I'm doing oracle cards now with these. The first card that we have, message that we have is. Sorry. The first card that we have is practice positivity. Lunar eclipses are never easy for a lot of us. They're never easy. We can feel very caught up in our emotions, caught up in everything. Like, yeah, we can just be, you know, if very emotional because there's endings. We could also, and also the fact that it's in November, it's, in, oh, it's, it's, it's Scorpio season, and also it's an emotional time, it's a deep emotional time. We're heading into November, which for me personally, whenever we come to like November, December, we start to, we're ending like the year's ending. So we're going to start seeing stuff from the past coming up. People, places and thoughts and feelings and it just can be a heavy time for a lot of us. So it says practice positivity, find things that help you be, um, find things that help you to be positive or try to. It's not easy. But even if you're like watching, like you know, because I'm watching Hell's Kitchen by Gordon Ramsay, yeah, <laughs> and that and I love that. That 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 makes me laugh, makes me feel positive. Find something that makes you feel positive. It could be writing, it could be cooking. Remember, Taurus is a very is a sign that's all about cooking. It could be anything. It could be, you know, dancing in the rain. It could be going to the park. It could be, you know beautifying yourself anything that makes you feel positive anything that helps raise your spirits even go to like the cafe and having like a coffee or a cake or anything even sometimes just to get out of the house okay second card that we have is awaken your vulnerabilities number three card number three is the empress card which is a taurus card so don't hide your vulnerability, just say it out. Don't hide it. 
now's not really the time to be hiding or oh, we'll do it another time. Have a cup of tea. We're not living in that world no more. That world is over. So even if you have to like find it with people or writing it down or, you know, hiding vulnerability with it, awaken your vulnerability is the key. And in fact, this is the Empress card as well. It's like putting things out there. Again, like what I said before. Whew, um, finding ways. Coffee shop or going to the spa. You know, it's really, it could be man a great time to be manifesting. But it's awakening our vulnerability. So we don't have to just be like the old, same old. We live in a new world now. And the last card that we have is step into the unknown. So when it says step into the unknown, we just never know what's going to happen during this lunar eclipse. Obviously, me and a lot of astrologers or tarians can say this is going to happen, that's going to happen. It's an eclipse, guys. We just don't know. That's why they say don't do any magic work or during the eclipse because... Certain things that are supposed to stay in our lives will stay. If things that leave, they will leave. We just have to just go into unknown. Okay, what, what I'm saying, what other people are saying is just a guide. Just see what happens. I think that if you've got intentions to do certain things during or after the eclipse, if you feel strongly about it, by all means do it. But just know that things can change. Things never stay the same. That's why they call them lunar eclipses. Lunar eclipses are about, you know, it's a it's an emotional eclipse. <laughs> it's a very powerful, very potent one. So when it's just also step into the unknown, it's just like just being open minded because you just never know what can happen. Okay. So yeah, powerful cards, guys, for this lunar eclipse. And yeah, that's my two cents worth. Now let's get on to the tarot for all the signs. So Aries, how are you? So this lunar eclipse in Taurus is going to fall in your money zone, second house. You also got Jupiter there too. So as we know with lunar eclipse, we are wrapping a lot of things up. So you could be, some of you could be wrapping up, you know, it could be debts or loans, but it could definitely be like you, you know, how you could, the second half is about self-worth. So if you felt like any insecurity about when it comes to like your money, resources, how you're spending, your savings, that could all be wrapped up now. And I feel some of you, if you, if some of you were very lucky enough to come into money, and you may have overspent or just not taking care, just being quite careless, or you've been quite, you know, it could be greedy, um, being quite stingy, any shape or form. That's gonna all come to a head too. You can I think you're gonna be looking at this very differently now. And yeah, I think a lot of that's gonna be happening. Um, I think a lot of you have got a lot to think about too. I think a lot of you can remember we're wrapping up a two year cycle. So there's a lot that's come to a head. And the second house is also about agriculture, what you're eating. So obviously, like two years ago, it's like a brand new beginning of this. Like, oh my God, what is all this? And now it's just like, actually, I actually know what I'm doing, I actually know what I'm planting. I actually feel quite good when I eat from the earth or I actually feel quite good when I'm wearing these types of clothes or a lot of this is to do with self-worth. A lot of this is to do with like self-esteem. I feel a lot of you, a lot of you may feel a bit more, it could be more comforting, but I feel a lot of you are going to be feeling just a little bit more confident, more confident in yourselves. And confident doesn't mean like boasting. It just feels like, you know, just a bit more confident. You know what you're doing. You know what you're saying. You know how to invest. You know how to plant. You know what to really invest in. And not just do it just for fashion or to show. It's just like a lot of this is for the long haul. So the card that you got, the oracle card you got is Express Your Inner Truth. And it's talking about, because remember I pulled out these cards because these are very much creativity cards. So, 
this is about about expressing that your creativity uh, that your creative shines when it reflects your genuine feelings and also what you're thinking so because taurus is very much a sign that is um taurus is a sign that's very creative remember we're talking about venus here so again like i said when i feel that a lot of you may be investing some of you may decide that you know what i feel confident to invest in in some type of creative in even even a creative pursuit that i've probably put to the back corner or you could find creative ways to invest in yourself so yeah but also it's about it's about being authentic it's about being true to yourself and not just following the herd remember um aries you're not a sign you're a sign that starts things and you know when you express your inner truth the confidence comes out it's building so yeah express your inner truth the star of the show which is you taurus along with scorpio so taurus any of you who are like zero to ten degrees just really going to feel this this is a full cycle that started in 2021 and this is to do with your physical self the fact you've got jupiter retrograde here as well is gonna be very different feeling i feel when i looked at the chart of this taurus a lot of the energies are pretty good a lot of the energies are in the 11th house and it's it does feel like a brand new beginning for you yes it's endings but there's a lot of brand new beginnings happening look back what happened from 2021 till now remember the first house about the physical yeah, about you. it's about your life, your retro relationships, but it's about your physical body. It could, yes, it definitely could be any um, health issues or if you had any, if you were trying to get healthier, you eating right, you know, really taking care of yourself. You know, a lot of this is going to come full throttle. A lot of this will come full steam ahead. I feel that if you did have any like issues, health issues or anything, um, a lot of this now could be resolved or, you know, I feel a lot of you, because you're the sign that likes to take care of itself. It's about, it's about self-esteem, but it's also to do with self-care. So um, maybe two years ago, you decided to really take care of your physical self, physical, mental, and emotional self. When you looked at your eating, some of you probably changed jobs, some of you your status change for your career some of you may have become parents as well um you know this remember taurus is, is a very fertile sign so it's like fruits are being bid and you know some of you could give birth now could give birth to a new project a project you were working on from like two years ago it could now come to a conclusion it could be a job it could be a relationship as well um like again because jupiter's retrograde here um a lot of uh some of you can actually feel quite lucky you're going back to the drawing board on a lot of things like you know this is not really if i eat this this doesn't really feel good if i overspend or because some of you may feel lucky too but when it's retrograde it's about like going back as well like you have to rein a lot of things in but yeah it's an end of a cycle now taurus because the North Node is now finished in your sign. It started last year, February 2022. And, you know, the nodes have changed. So I feel that a lot of you may feel quite... Um, what's the word? A lot of you may feel quite relieved. Like, oh my God, I'm so glad this is over. Or some of you may feel like... Uh, sad. Regretful. A lot of emotions can come up. You know, lunar eclipses are about emotions can be very strong. So I will say a lot of you, one good thing that you could do is like have like nice luxurious bath with some salt baths or some bubble baths or um, essential oils will be really good as well. And, you know, if you're, if you're on that health kick, just continue doing it because in 18 years later, it'll be calling like, what have you done? You know, so yeah. I would say continue to do it if you can. But I feel a lot of you have made lots of strides. Remember, you've got Jupiter here. And next year, we have the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction, which is happening in your sign. 
you know a lot of you tourists have come a long way from you know a lot of a lot has happened you know the fact you've got uranus in your sign and you know last year we had the mars uranus north node conjunction which is for 15 years that's a big one um and now we have this other conjunction that's happening next year between now and like i don't know for the next like nearly 20 years you guys are still going to be the stars of the show because whatever happens in your sign it does tend to carry through so yeah it's, it's a lot happening also we've got like the Pluto in your sign as well so you know i'm going off on one but i just feel that i i just need to because this is the end of a lunar eclipse that's happening in your sign and this does last between three to six months it could be a year but it really does depend but like three to six months but yeah a lot of purging that's going to be going on for a lot of you taurians so the card that you have taurus is success and congratulations you did it you're 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 a sign that works at its own pace some people can say it's very too slow some people can say you can be quite boring. Some people can say that you don't work fast enough. Some people may even say you don't work hard enough. But you're consistent. You're consistent. And even if you did fall off the wagon in anything that happened in your life from 2021 till now, you still kept on course. You still stayed on course. If any of you was being creative and you just weren't as consistent with it, you just did like bits here, there, and there, because you know, so you know, things get in our what things get in our way, Taurus. It could be family, it could be friends, it just could be life. But you still stay the course. You still believe in what you're doing. Success is gonna come. If you were trying to heal your body, if you're trying to heal yourself for any traumas or pain, um, success can come. And, I, and also, if you're trying to like get yourself healthier, you know, whether you fell off the wagon at times. Now you can see that success will come. Um, even with a job, you didn't like the job, but you knew you had to earn, you had to stay with it just to earn money, to pay off anything. Or just, you know, you just had to stay there because you, you're living a good wage. But you want to change, this could come. I think that you should see everything that happened, Taurus, as a win. You know, because when when people say, Taurus, that, oh, um, was it when people say, oh, you know, you're not doing this every day for 10 minutes or even if you don't, for me, if even if you don't do things for 10 minutes every day, Taurus, but you're still thinking about it, you're doing little bits, that means you're still doing it, okay? And the fact that you believe in yourself, that's all that matters. So it's a hap you know, some of the, the ending, of course, you know, you've got planets that are opposing you, you've got the Mercury, you've got the Mars and Scorpio, you've got the Sun. Yes, you're going to have niggles within your relationship. There's nothing that you cannot sort out, okay? You you have this every year. Because this is an eclipse, there's a major ending coming, okay? So, yeah, it's like next, I'll see this eclipse in 18 years' time. But you've come a long way, Taurus. And like what the car says, congratulations, you did it. Hello Gemini, so this lunar eclipse in Taurus is in your 12th house, you know you've got Jupiter there as well and yeah there's a lot of course there's a lot going on, you've got the sun in your 6th house too so you've got the 6th and 12th house action going on so this is a, this is definitely a time where obviously like, I'm just looking at the sky, the sky is getting very dark and it's raining so a lot of you Geminis may just want to just not do too much just kick back and relax and um, but saying that because it's a lunar eclipse it can be some powerful emotions that come up powerful endings that come up for a lot of you gemini i'm um, gemini's and the fact that you've got jupiter retrograde there i feel a lot of you are going to be working on yourself um you you could even find you get a bit more pleasure in working on um, releasing anything that's toxic in your life or people places visiting places that um that you wouldn't even visit yourself it could be churches or hidden things it could it could even be brothels <laughs> you know that it's very limitless or it could be secret groups something that no one really knows about gemini 
Well, essentially, this can be you working on like your health, your wellness, your mental and physical. It, of course, it can bring up powerful emotions that, that have been hidden, that's been trapped. So there are, you know, I feel that some of you may come into contact with people that can help you, that can help heal you, that can help find ways that you can like emote any trapped emotions that you could be feeling. Because the 12th and 6th house, they're never easy. They are never, ever easy. Okay? And you, some of you Geminis may find it very easy. You don't have to just do too much. But some of you may find that emotionally you can't move on until you sort all the cobwebs out. So it could, you know, so there could be some emotional stagnation. It could be, some, but I think the fact, the fact that the sun is in your 6th, it can help you work through it, even if you don't feel like to. It's like, come on, let's just do this. We can do this, okay? So the card that you have, Gemini, is share your art with the world. So if any, and because and, this is like the Piscean house, this house, the 12th house, is about creativity. It's about meditation. It's about solitude. But it is definitely about, you know, being creative. So... That's one way of sharing what you're feeling stuck on is sharing like any type of creative work you're doing. It could also be writing because you're a sign that likes to communicate. So this is actually great for writing. So it can share your art with the world and it's, and it's saying it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's allowing others to enjoy your creative work. So I think for a lot of you Geminis, if you can't say or even find it hard to feel, it's good to get it out there in a way that it can connect to people. Or it can connect to your... Um, yeah, it could connect to your friends. Or you can connect to, like, a... a, a I was going to say a lawyer. It could be a lawyer. Connect to, like, someone that is... A, a, why, am, why am I thinking barrister? All these words are coming. Yeah, it could be um, a person that deals with, you know, anyone that's counselling, any of that. Or it could just be you thinking, you know what, I find that when I do share like what I feel or draw or write what I feel, it actually makes sense to me. And the fact that this is in your 12th house, this is the time to be doing it, okay? It's not going to be easy, Gemini, but it's, it's doable, you know? And I feel a lot of you definitely will learn a lot from you about yourself as well. Hello, Cancer. So, Cancer, if you're 0 to 10 degrees, you're going to benefit from this because this is going to sextile you. All the water signs. Obviously, it's like Scorpio and um, all the earth signs. So, Cancer, this is in your 11th house, you know, and you also have, um, you know, you've got the 5th house and 11th house action going on. You also got Jupiter there too. So a lot of I feel a lot of cancers had a lot of soul searching to do. To be honest with you, for Nick, for from like two years ago till now, like who your friends really are, who your tribe is, who your group is, who your people them are, basically. Some of you may have made a lot of friends, could be enemies. You know, you might find that they're not really your people. Some of you may have, you know, your goals changed and. People you surround yourself with. Some of you may have been a bit more, been a bit more, having more humanitarian in nature with people that you never really felt inclined to in the beginning. Some of you may have attended protests, could have arranged protests, you could have been been the leader of that group as well. But essentially, you know, I feel a lot of you cats may have for a really good kick up the arse and was like, okay, I'm going to get, I'm going to do this. I'm going to write that book. I'm going to draw or I'm going to, you know, work for myself. I'm going to go, I'm going to actually go to that function and network with people. Or some people may have been very much drawn to you. Um, now this is coming to a conclusion. I feel that your eyes might be a bit more wide open. I feel a lot of you may be having a bit more fun now. If you didn't have fun then, you may start to find you're having a bit more fun now. Uh, again, because you've got the fifth house action going on. This is to do with like children, creativity, 
So all of that could be playing out too. And yeah, there's, you know, I feel this is, this is, this is a nice action for you, Cancer. Really nice. Really nice for you guys. Because, you know, you had, um, what did you have? You had that like, Jupiter in your 10th before and, well, Jupiter's still in your 11th. But, yeah, you had the nodes that were in your 12th and it just didn't probably, you know, you probably just didn't feel good, you know. But now it's just like, okay, I feel a bit more relaxed. But I think one good thing is that some of you may have made lifelong friends yeah like lifelong friends and i think even if you didn't you might start making friends now i know it's i know it's endings but i feel some of you may start to see who really should be in your life now who can help you or who you can help who you can surround your, yourself with who you can trust okay because things are about to become real. You know, you've got Saturn in your ninth and everything. And things are, I'll say, like I was saying to Taurus, there's a lot of conjunctions happening in Taurus. That's all in your 11th house. So things are getting very heated up. So the card that you got is journaling. Wow. And this card is talking about writing your feelings. And also there could be some activities and creativities and it can help you as a writer. So I put this to you, Cancers. If you were doing lots and lots of networking, okay, and from, from 2021 till now, lots of networking, lots of, you know, could have been having fun or just like talking to people, getting to know people, you know, joining this group and that group protest, all of that, humanitarian work. But you forgot about your creativity. You forgot about your art and your talents and any type of talent that you got, you, you didn't really put too much on it. I feel this is the time to be doing it. The fact you got the journaling card. And, you know, my rising sign is cancer, you know. So there's a lot that's been going on from 2021 till now. And there's a lot that I've actually been thinking about myself. And this is actually a great card to have because sometimes when you're daydreaming or you're being moody or anything that's happening in your life, cancer, you get a lot of... At, you get a lot of um, images that stirs up into your head. And this card is just saying, you're going to be getting that. And now's the time to put it to pen to paper. Or put it on a blog. Or put it on a podcast. Okay? Because now, creativity, any any type of like, anything you're good at, cancers, now that's going to be stirred up. Now you have to put it out there. This is the ending. It's like, do, it's like gold time. Okay? So... Get your stuff out there, Cancer. And know, and it's really great for manifesting, really great for journaling. And also know that there are people that will support you. Okay? But it's really entirely up to you. Hello, Leo. So this is going to affect you, Leo, because it's fixed. This is, if you're 0 to 10 degrees, Leo, you're going to be feeling this. Because this is that in your career zone. And... You know, look back two years ago, Leo. What happened in your career? Did you change? Did you change jobs? Was you manager? Was you promoted? Was you demoted? Was you... Did you start like... The 10th house is not just... It is your career. It's about your general status. It's about... You know, some of you may have gotten married. Some of you may now have... May have find it's not actually for you. Some of you may have become parents. Okay. When we've got the 10th and 4th house action going on, this is what happens. Um, some of you may have also, you know, been very busy. Very, very busy. Like, very ambitious. And it didn't come without its drama. It didn't come without, there was probably jealousy or, you know, your bosses asked you to do more. You know, there's a lot that was on you, Leos. And obviously this is, for the next three to six months, there's still going to be a lot of that there, okay? But now coming to a conclusion and an ending, you know, I feel a lot of you now are going to see, you know what, this job ain't for me. No, this relationship ain't for me. These people are not for me. This house is not for me. These, anything is going to be like a conclusion. But of course, it's essentially the 10th house is career as well. 
so your status definitely will change you could be you could decide that you know you worked so hard the last two years you now want to work part time or less you may want to decide you want to work from home you may want to be more closer to family and friends you may want to start you know doing your creative work you know this is a major thing that's happening now leos so it's really time to think about this really time to think you know you've got Pluto going in your sign next um your op opposite sign next year and what you used to do in the past is no longer going to be working so really and truly think hard um i think if if a, if a career if, if a job you, if you do lose a job leo it's because it wasn't meant to be but if you decide that you want to change like your hours or change your working um, anything like that, that means because something else is definitely going to be coming up. So the card that you have, Leo, is the Law of Attraction. And again, because this squeezes you, it doesn't come not without its drama. Okay? So this, this card is just talking about you keeping positive and also surrounding yourself with people that are very high vibration. And also being around, like, check your, you know, just be very aware of your aura. Check who you surround yourself with. Try and be in, like, an environment that's very nice and calm. If you're going to be around people that are very ambitious, make sure that they have a heart. And not just all about business. Make sure that if you're talking to someone, if you're networking with someone, that they're just not about the work. They're all about, if they're about the family life, if they have, like, outside interests. You know, know that they are your people. So the law of attraction is essentially what are you like wishing for? What do you want to call? What, what, what do you want, Leah? What do you want to call? What is it your big wishes are? What do you seek to end? And what do you seek to, you know, um, come into your life? And what do you seek to leave your life? There's some questions that are coming up, Leah. The 10th house is not an easy house for everyone. You know, but I think if you're ambitious and you know where you want to go, this really can help you. It really is entirely up to you. So that you've got actually a very nice card because it is about positivity. And, you know, sometimes, Leo's, we can feel quite negative when things don't go our way. But this card is very much a positive card. It's just telling you just to keep helping raise your vibrations, even if things don't really go well within your like career your family home just just know okay tomorrow's gonna be better or tomorrow's gonna be better and or you know even writing down your manifestations of what you actually want on how you see your future and your career okay hello virgo how are you so virgo this is in your ninth house this is going to be affecting all of the virgos that are zero to ten degrees this is like your sister sign you know your it could be your brother or sister. You know, this is Earth. We're talking Earth here. So this is a big one for a lot of you Virgos. You are, you know, ending or wrapping up, traveling. You're wrapping up anything to do with uh, a goal. Uh, it could be you finish read, finally finishing reading the books. Finally finish learning that language, that course or... Anything like that, you know, finish re finish writing a book. Now you're getting it published. Now you're getting it out there. Or it could be you. Yeah, it could be anything like that. You know, it could be you, you know, some of you may have taken like a degree to be a mentor, or to be like, I don't know, a minister, a pope. And now it's like, now it's come to a conclusion that's come to an end you've passed. And the fact you've got Jupiter retrograde here as well is like, you know, you're really thinking about things like you're just going over stuff. You know that there's greatness that is actually coming for you. OK. Again, like I said to Taurus, is even though this, this is ending, there's new beginnings that's going to be happening for you. So, yeah. And also the sun's in your third house. So I feel that you're how you're communicating your hopes, wishes and dreams. You know, it, it feels like the world is definitely your oyster. You may feel overconfident <laughs> during this new moon, but, you know, Virgos are really not known to be boastful. 
you know, you lot are the doctors, you lot like to work behind the scenes, like about Pisces. But you might feel a little bit more, a little bit more superior this time round. Like, you know what, I, I know that I've got this. I, I, you know, I, I've studied this for the past two years. I've got this. You know, you, you may even not even realise, but you could be manifesting without even realising it. Okay? The ninth house is very much a manifesting house. People don't talk about it as much, but it actually is. The Sagittarius house and it's a house of philosophy. It's a house of uh, higher learning. Okay? So, yeah. And it does feel like whatever you want to do, you can do. You, you know, the confidence that you're going to be having now, Virgos, is, you know, I spoke to, you know, I, I will say it again. I'm going to keep saying it like last year we had this conjunction for the past 15 years in Taurus. We've got another conjunction in Taurus next year and it's going to be in your ninth house. So you're going to have a lot of ninth house action throughout the whole of this decade going forward. You know, so whatever you finish, you're still going to be continuing to do the learning you're a sign that always learns anyway. But it's always good to know that you started something two years ago and it's now ending. The card that you've got is helping children. And it's talking about like your life purpose involves teaching, guiding, helping young people. And the fact that we've got the ninth house is about higher learning, teaching. You may come into, you know, some of you may decide that, you know, you finished traveling, you've met whoever you wanted to meet you know, but now it's time to, like, put, like, pen to paper, um, you know, you've, you've, you've experienced the world, and now you want to, like, help people that are, it could be mentoring people as well, it could be, definitely could be younger people, um, you could, a mentor is someone that younger people look up to anyway, so, you know, one of your students could be asking you, can you be a mentor to me, and you could be teaching a lot of these people things that they never even thought about, as we all know, as Whitney Houston said, the, you know, children are our future. They are. So you may find yourself surrounded by a lot of young people now during this um, lunar eclipse. But it's all about teaching them, guiding them, helping them. They may not ask you for help, but sometimes you'll just know. Okay. So, yeah, but it's also a very spiritual time for a lot of you Virgos. Especially if you Virgos are not like spiritually inclined, you might get a much more spiritual. So yeah, good things are happening, Virgo. Hello, Libra. How are you? How has your eclipse been? So this is another eclipse. Your fellow sister or brother sign in Venus. Obviously, it's Earth. So this is in your eighth house and. You know, you have Jupiter retrograde going there. This is all in your money zone. Shared resources. Money owed to others. Tax and losses. and Death, rebirth, inheritance. This is an uh, ending from two years ago till now. Now, if you had a loan to pay off, you have now paid it off. <laughs> Fingers crossed you've paid it off. If you had a um, if you had like any issues or troubles with like a with a, with inheritance, it can now be resolved or sorted. Anything to do with like the tax man, any like unresolved issues, it can now be resolved. Some of you may even get like a tax rebate. It could have been this issue could have been for two years, if not more. And finally, like the tax man says, oh, <laughs> you know. We have made a mistake, <laughs> you know, obviously it's wishful thinking, but these things could happen. Remember, this is like a general. So, you know, you might get money coming in or even money owed from other people you might get. Or even you might finally just pay off money that you owe other people. Could be a debt or just could be like a loan or, but it's just coming to like a whole conclusion. Even when it comes to like your feelings and thoughts, how you felt. Or what was going through your mind and even your emotions from like, could be from like seven years ago, could be from like 30 years ago. Uh, it can now be resolved. And I mean in a way that if you had like unresolved issues, emotional issues, it was do like an ex-partner or family or 
anything that is em- that emotionally has hurt you in any way or even like fears you've had it can now come to a conclusion whether you've seen that person from the past or whether you're seeing um you know easing out that thing or talking to someone whether it's therapy or you're doing some deep dive work yourself or you know you it's like it's like issue, emotional issues are being resolved libra and it's going to probably i am picking up something that happened nearly 30 years ago though i mean i could be wrong but that's what i'm actually picking up there's something unresolved some of you Leo, um librans had and you know you librans you're very much you're very charming people you're always smiling always very pleasant to talk to when it comes to like emotional stuff there can be a bit of a disconnect so that disconnect can now be resolved now okay and it, it, it this eclipse might even force you to face up to things that you've actually not wanted to face up to so yes so it's just a a deep cleansing should we say Leah you're having a very very much a deep cleansing so when we come to you know your oracle card you have daily practice and it's talking about the more you practice whether it's you practicing forgiveness practicing like a new skill practicing Remembering to pay off anything, practicing, remember to finish, remembering to, you know, get involved in any type, anything that you're owed or people are owed you, anything. It's about being consistent. And it this card is also saying about it will make you more comfortable and more confident the more you practice. So I am picking up, you know, like I said, if it's not like any to do things to do with money, if it is like your emotions... It's about practicing opening up and just trying to be and keep it like a daily practice. If it's not you speaking to someone, it's you writing it down or it's you working with, I don't know, an astrologer or any spiritual things like that. So, yeah, there's a big, deep cleansing time for a lot of you Librans. Hello, Scorpio. How are you? So, Scorpio, this is a big one for you because... Like Taurus, you are the stars of the show. So this eclipse is in your... This eclipse is with Jupiter, probably retrograde, is in your seventh house. And, you know, we had an eclipse that was... When was it? It was like four... No, no, it was, four, no, it was like six months ago in your sign. It was a lunar eclipse. And... You, a lot of you, I felt, did a lot of shadow work, a lot of cleansing and a lot of soul searching, deep soul searching, a lot of truth telling, a lot of, you know, some of you, in order for you to be a phoenix, you had to really be honest with what you did or what other people did. But there was a lot of cleansing that was going on. And now, that was in your first house, so a lot of you... I felt really transformed yourself as well. And going with the nodes that happened in last year, February till now. You know, this is a big time for a lot of you scorpions and Tauruses. You know, you're the the detective of the zodiac. You, you're about the money, money owed to you. You're about the deep, dark things that people feel uncomfortable. But you're also the, you know, the detective. You're a sexual being. But now it's like, you know, what happened in was it May? You had an eclipse in your sign. Now we have an eclipse that's opposing you, but still it's like your first house. This is still gonna be touching you in a big way. You know, you are ending this this I feel like it's like a cycle that's ending. I feel, especially if you are zero to five degrees. If we're going back to the past, Scorpio, I think a lot of you, if you can, uh, look back what happened in 1995. Okay? Um, because, obviously, you can look back seven years ago when we had eclipses. 
in your sign it was like the you know it was like the north node which was in your eclipse um which was in your sign you know and we also had eclipses in your sign but also look back nearly 30 years ago look back in the 90s and see what happened i believe it's like october or november 1995 or even 94 but 94 and 95 that eclipses and uh, we had the nodes which was in um which was in you and taurus's sign so look back then and see what happened because this eclipse i feel can bring back the past and i've spoken about it in the beginning that for some reason november and december it brings back the past it brings back whether it's people from the past, places, jobs, things just come back, especially in December, but it starts like November. And obviously this is like the ending of October when this happens, but it's still, it, we're edging into November and this lasts for like three to six months. It could be up to a year to some, for some of you. So look back, you know, there's something that's a, a, a conclusion that's happening in your relationship sector, Scorpio. And whether you want it to happen or not, because, you know, you're fixed, you're very emotional, very passionate. There's a, there, there may be an unwillingness to let something go. But I feel that once you get like the inside scoop, you know, that you're the detective, you will know, OK, even though I'm unwilling, this is I actually need to try and let this go. Or I actually need to have this discussion or I need to align myself with these types of people remember this is about general relationships about contracts as well so a contract could come out whether it's you're signing a contract or you know you're partnering up with someone if you're doing business with anyone there may be a conclusion that comes but this is very much like a business time but it is to do with your relationship too okay so yeah big time for you when we come to your oracle card you have deserving and it's saying that it's taught it's very spiritual it talks about you know the angels and god and it's talking about you like all of god's children you deserve happiness health and love so if you've been you know even if you look back two years ago scorpio when this when this when this happened this story happened like from november 2021 you may have felt like there may have been a bitterness with some of you or there may have been a, a hardness, an unwillingness, a stubbornness, which actually made you not feel very lovable. But this card is just reminding you that you are lovable, you are deserving, but and you deserve, if you, if you feel that you're never going to get happiness, you're never going to have good health, you're never going to find true love, this card is saying that you will. Sometimes you just need to get rid of the dead wood in order to clear the dead wood in order for it to happen and not hold on. Um, you know, you're one of those signs that tends to be very obsessed with things, people, places, um, even when it's um, run its course. But you will know with this eclipse, especially the zero to five degrees, but all Scorpions, but especially zero to five, will know actually it's time to let go. And knowing that you are deserving of all the good things, okay? hello my saggies how are you i hope you are well so saggies <laughs> i know it's not been easy for a lot of you because you know you this is an in conjunction with taurus and you know this this is a sixth house with jupiter retrograde being there and you know, I, I feel this is going to be very much an emotional time, especially when I looked at the chart, the, the, the rising sun, this is Pisces, and, you know, the, the yeah, it's going to be, it, it can feel quite emotional. Pisces rules your fourth. And especially the fact we've got Uranus retro, not Uranus, you've got Jupiter retrograde here. I feel a lot of you Sagittarians, you know, remember we're going back from this story from 2021, when it entered your sixth house of health, wellness, pets, work life. And some of you Sagittarians, you know, remember you're mutable. So I feel some of you may have felt, okay, you know what? I'm going to, you know, carry on how I used to be, you know, because everything's going to be okay. I'm going to keep working hard, keep eating junk, 
keep missing my uh, a doctor's appointments or not not intentionally but just like because you're so engrossed in what you're doing all these things that were very important you just missed so you just thought i'm going to carry on what i'm doing so things like doctor's appointments or not taking care of your health um place could have been a mess when it came to like your work life which just everything was just all over the place or for some reason you managed to get the work done um chaos utter chaos could have been and some of you you know it, it, now it's like sort of things like it's run to the run you run yourself to the ground and some of you may have gotten your health may have gotten worse or your work life may have suffered in some way some of you um, it's not about high vibration or low vibration it's just that what you're thinking some of you thought you know what i'm gonna get my help from point because not only is uranus in my sixth house as well that can cause many unshockable things i need to start taking care i need to like be healthier i need to like i don't know work out i don't know two three times a week meditate take things slow like not work too fast make sure i start one project and finish if i've got if you've got a pet you're taking care of the pet you're making sure that your house is clean you know you're making just show yourself presentable you know you're making sure that you're arriving early for work as well when you're eating healthier you know not like massive strides but like making strides for that some of you may have been in between okay and the fact that we've got Jupiter retrograde is like, you know, we're going back. We're going back. We're not we're not um going too forward. And it's a it's a it's a this is an ending that's happening. So I feel if any of you did have any like issues like two years ago, it's now coming to a conclusion, like you're getting like to the you're getting now you're getting to the point of I need to fix this, I need to sort this out, I need to find a new doctor, I need to find a nutritionist, I need to find a new job. Or, you know, if you if you started, like, a project, or if you're studying, I don't know whether you to be a doctor or anything, you, this now can be, like, some of you may have been ending that course now. But I feel a lot of you are going to be learning, you've learned a lot. You, I feel a lot of you are going to be learning a lot. I mean, this is the moon, this is about to do with our emotions. And some of this could be to do with, like, the past. Like, you know, um, some of you may want to be as healthy as you can, mind, body, and soul, because of like family issues or hereditary issues, do you know what I mean? Or, you know, you don't want to be like how you used to be because it just doesn't work. So when it comes to your card, you've got blocks lifted and it's saying about any obstacles that you that you, that you had was definitely from fear and then now being lifted away. Perfect card for you, Sagis, because, you know, sometimes we keep busy because we don't want to deal with anything and now... And that's definitely to do with fear. But this card is just reassuring you that anything that you was like running away from or traveling away from, it's now going to be lifted. And like I said before, I feel a lot of you are going to be learning a lot more about yourself and your work life and probably about other people too. Hello, Capricorn. How are you? <laughs> this is going to be very much benefiting you. Uh, this lunar eclipse because it's in your fifth house especially if you jupiter being there and yeah this is a nice one if you're zero to five degrees cap zero to ten degrees i keep saying i'm so sorry about that zero to ten degrees of the earth signs and the water signs um especially you capricorn your sister sign or brother sign you are going to be benefiting greatly okay because not only is your fifth house a fun house, it's about dating. Um, this is also to do children, fertility, creativity, and working for thyself. Being creative and making money out of it, which you're very good at doing. Well, some of you, obviously, this is a general. So... Again, I say to all the signs, look back two years ago, what happened? Some of you may have um, started like a project and now it's come to an end. Like, you know, I started to be more creative and now I'm, I'm going to show my creativity out there. Or some of you may have become pregnant and now you're going to be giving birth. Or some of you may have decided you're going to change up your look, look a bit more flashy. And now you've, 
you know, you're really going to go for it or thinking about doing it, you're going to go for it. Some of you may have date, decided, I'm going to date a lot of people and you're now going to go for it. Um, the person that you're dating might be, there could be the one, but remember, this is like fun and dating. Time to take care of yourself, like physically. Like, you know, if you, some of you decided you want to, some of you may have started to get really healthy, you know, fitness, and now you're seeing the results now. Or if you are doing like a project, you want to work for yourself, you're now seeing the rewards now. Okay. But she's Jupiter being here as well. Things can be expanded, but obviously because it's retrograde, we are not, you know, there's a bit of a cautiousness that goes on with this. And some of us are going back over things too. So this is a great one for you. Yeah, this is really great. Um, you know, I feel some of you actually came out of your shell, which is a beautiful thing, Capricorns. Um, not to say that a lot of you were not being cautious, but I feel that some of you were just thought, you know what, I, I've, I, I've got a lot of free time. I'm going to have fun, you know. And I think if any of you did become parents... Or if you are going to become parents, because some of you may have become parents during that time. Or some of you may be, you know, and I said, now you're going to be giving birth. And this is definitely going to be life changing. I feel a lot of you are going to be feeling a bit more settled as well. But so when we come to like, your card, Capricorn, we have pay attention to your dreams. And it's talking about you having like this, like, you know, sometimes in life we have like divine guidance, whether it's through, I don't know, someone cross who's crossed over or, you know, we start seeing synchronicities everywhere. But especially in your dreams, it's talking about definitely your dreams. And it's saying that the answers are in your dreams and when they appear, they are just helping you. So if you've done like... I feel if you Capricorn, if you've done like lots of projects or like creative projects, but you've not really found the one, you know, some something in your dreams can come true, or this there's, there's some type of vision, or there's some type of, or it could be a person. It could be even like if you've got children, they could be helping you. But something's gonna come that's gonna make you see where you need to go during this eclipse. And it might be shocking. But it also might be like, wow, I <laughs> didn't know that I could actually do that. I didn't know I could write. I didn't know I could draw. Or something's going to be coming to your attention in a very big way. So listen out for it. Yes, nothing wrong with being cautious. But also, you know, I feel that once it comes, a lot of you will see like, hmm, okay, I might just try this and see where it goes. And if you know, it's a whole brand new career. Okay, so... Pay attention to your dreams during this lunar eclipse. Hello, my Aquarius. How are you? So, Aquarius, like all the other fixed signs, you're in the hot seat. This is in your fourth house with Jupiter there. So, how's things been for you, Aquarius? You know, um, <laughs> I mean, it's been a bit of a whirlwind for you anyway this year. Okay, considering when Pluto just entered your sign just for a little bit. And then, you know, we've got these eclipses that are hitting you, your fourth and your tenth house. And after now, we've got this, this lunar eclipse. And next, should we have, like, this Jupiter, um, Uranus conjunction that's going to be happening in your fourth house. So there's, like, going to be lots of life-changing stuff happening for you, Aquarius. Let's just be honest. And with this lunar eclipse, you know, look back. I'll say, like, specifically, I'll say for everyone, but specifically look back what happened, could be seven years ago, nearly 30 years ago, but, you know, especially two years ago when this 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 journey started, this releasing started. There was, like, lots of releasing happening. Then afterwards, then we had new beginnings happening concerning your fourth house, concerning your home, your family, your heritage, your lineage, your, you know, building, moving, and even like how your emotions are and how you're feeling. Whenever we have a fourth house action, especially for a sign that is not naturally open emotionally, because we're all emotional in our own way, but some of us, it just takes a while for us to be a bit more open. 
it feels very uncomfortable. So with the fourth house, the past emotions can come up. Remember, we're dealing with Taurus here. And also this house is like a, it's a cancer house as well. So past themes can come up for us to deal with. And definitely could be to do family, our grandparents, our mum. Could be our children as well. It could be us as parents, how we are as mothers, dads. It could some of us could decide that you know once and for all we just want to move, we we'll move somewhere quiet, might want to move to the city, or it could be us thinking, you know what, um, I'm now gonna be doing like a home business. I'm now going to be taking the plunge. I'm now going to be working with my family. You know, it's it's really different. You know, with all the houses. It's not just one specific thing. It's always many things that happen <laughs> within the house. And also with you being Aquarius as well, you know, some of you may just want to be a bit more still. Like you just, you just need time to think, need time to grasp what is going on because there are things that are going to be leaving you. And it could be family members, it could be your children or fam family members moving out. Some of you could be thinking, finally, some of you could be thinking, okay, that's good, you're being independent, but deep down, you're feeling not satisfied. Uh, it could be some of you probably decided to remortgage or decorate your home. Or, you know, if you went into, like, the business of buying and selling, and now things are actually finally going through. Um, it could be you moving closer to family, finally. Could be you getting more closer to family. You know, it's it's again, it's a lot of it is endless. So when we come to your card, Aquarius, you have listen only to love, and this card is saying about not letting anything, anything to do with like fear to distract you from your like mission. So a lot of you could be more feeling much more emotional, um, emotional. Um, is not un it's uncomfortable for some, but being emotional Aquarius, it just makes you stronger. So when this card is saying about listen to love, it's like listen to your heart. Not to say you haven't got a heart, but a lot of you are very much in your head. And this full moon, especially with Jupiter retrograde being there, it's like we're going back over things. We're going back over old ways and emotions. We're going back over old habits in a way. And, you know, there are going to be some, it's not even uncomfortable, there are going to be some emotional leanings and low emotional stuff that's coming up that we're going to have to deal with. Or even especially conversations, because you're a sign that likes to talk. So, yes, emotional deep stuff coming up for you, Aquarians. But just remember, we are leaving the old and bringing in the new. Hello, my patient Pisces. How are you? So, we have this lunar eclipse, which is happening in your third house. You know, you have Jupiter there, retrograde. Sorry, like what I said before. Sorry, Pisces. Um, like what I said before. That you know the the rising sign to this is Pisces, and you've got the tenth house, which is Cancer. So it's like this first house, fifth house action going on, and also one special thing is, of course, we've got Saturn, which is in your sign. So it's about time to get your work done now, Pisces. I feel it's about time. If some of you are very much looking about looking for others for advice or just looking to others too much, the fact you've got Saturn there is just showing you, okay, just, just get to work. Get to work, Pisces. You don't have to, like, kill yourself. Just get to work, you know. If you want to blog, if you want to... If there's stuff that you want to do, basically, Pisces, time to do it, okay? And... Some of you may have started like a project two years two years ago, and now you're going to be bringing it out. If some of you were writers or were learning or um, doing like short courses 
or if you wanted to like um do short distance travel you may just do it now if some of you wanted to put stuff on social media of you know anything that's taken a while from two years ago it can now be can now be like a conclusion to it a bit like virgo i feel some of you are very creative actually you're a creative sign anyway but i feel that some of you may have like written a book or magazine or think and now it's like some of you are taking the plunge and some of you may be putting it out now which is always good and um yeah i feel for a lot of you pisces even how you're communicating as well it, there may have been some misunderstandings two years ago you may have been a bit blunt or not really forthcoming what you're thinking or saying and now you're going to be like you know what this is what i actually wanted to say could be to all your siblings, could be your neighbour. If there's any drama that happened with your siblings or neighbours, this can now be resolved and sorted out too. So, yeah, it's actually a quite nice one for you, especially if you're 0 to 10 degrees, Pisces. You'll all feel it, but especially that degree, you'll definitely feel it. So when we come to your card, Pisces, you've got new project. And it's talking about like a newborn, your actions are growing your idea into reality. So like what I said in the beginning, Pisces, I feel this is very much, even though it's like other stuff to do with, you know, your siblings and your, you know, short distance. I do feel a lot of you, I think maybe because Saturn's here, a lot of you are feeling very ambitious. Like there might be so much things swirling within your mind, so much projects that you want to get off the table and some of you may just be kicking back and just dreaming about doing it or some of you may just be making little steps towards it but not really not sure or it just could be you thinking i don't know what to do it could be a bit another a bit of a daze but this card is about new projects so i feel deep down some of you and i i, I wholeheartedly believe because saturn's there that there's something brewing within you. There's something brewing within you. Something you need to share into this world. There's something you need to bring to this world. There's something that is coming up. And we're waiting for you, Pisces. <laughs> okay. The fact that you have um, also Pluto in your 11th house as well. That's going to be, I think that's going to be helping a lot of you. Because uh, Pluto is direct. And that's helping a lot of you. We're seen, we're, I've seen a lot of Pisces anyway on doing media work. So that might be something you guys may be wanting to do, okay? Um, if you can't work with anyone, like start your own podcast. You know, there's loads of ideas coming up. Um, it's really good to like write them down, okay? So it's this card is definitely saying that the world is your oyster. You just have to just go for it, okay? So guys, that was the lunar eclipse in taurus video for all of you thank you so much guys for listening if you listen to the whole video thank you so much uh it's a bit of a long one which it had to be let's just be honest but yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this feel free to let me know how this eclipse has gone for you and also don't forget to like share and subscribe and i will see you soon with the november okay thank you very much take care bye